Wow, so much is happening in AI safety right now. Yesterday, August 8th, 2024, Elizabeth Warren, Senator from Massachusetts, published an open letter to Sam Altman. OpenAI released their most recent safety report. Zico Coulter, who is a prominent AI safety researcher, joins OpenAI as part of their board. All of this happening during election season in the United States. It's very interesting. I'd like first to briefly contrast what's happening right now with uh, how tech played a role in the election season in 2016. For anyone who's aware of the Cambridge Analytica story, which is a fascinating story, a bit of an unfortunate story, but also fascinating, uh, knows that there was lots happening behind the scenes, predominantly on Facebook, um, regarding targeted advertising, targeted content on Facebook. Um, and no one was really aware of it. At least the public wasn't aware of it until after the election. I think there's a few things that I would say. First off, I'm very, very encouraged to see safety being such a priority for federal government, for the public, and for open AI, um, especially in the wake of Sam Altman getting fired months ago because of concerns around him prioritizing product over safety, Ilya Sutskiver uh, later leaving the company because he felt that OpenAI was not prioritizing safety. They, for a, a few months now, have really kind of been critiqued for not prioritizing safety. So as a public, we should be keeping an eye on and be trying to hold them accountable or at least encouraging our representatives to hold them accountable. So it's good to see the reports coming out. There's work being done and they're being transparent about it. That's very different than what we saw in 2016. So right off the bat, I, I really appreciate that. And I think that's very good. But at the same time, it's all within this context of Oh, they've already been dinged a few times and, and prominent leaders in open AI have left the company or been fired and brought back because safety has not been considered one of their priorities. So they're kind of coming from behind. They're playing catch up a bit in terms of the AI safety game. Um, and they really need to be pushing forward. They really need to be lead, leading that. And we need all of the kind of leaders in AI model development to, to be prioritizing safety. So really interesting stuff coming out. I'm going to kind of go through all of the heavy hitters. And then I also have kind of my own personal anecdote where I'm now realizing that I was running into some of these concerns around safety that I'll share at the end when I was using OpenAI's uh, custom GPT tooling. Here's the open letter published from Elizabeth Warren on August 8th, addressed, Dear Mr. Altman, OpenAI, quote, is putting a priority on profits and growth while preventing workers from voicing their concerns about its technology. You have stated that addressing the dangers posed by artificial intelligence, quote, should be global priority. Yet OpenAI's board members and employees have repeatedly warned that OpenAI has sacrificed safety in the pursuit of profit. You yourself have acknowledged that AI models have the potential to be significantly destabilizing for public safety and national security, and that you can't anticipate every potential abuse or failure of the technology. We ask that you provide answers to the following questions no later than August 22nd, and then there's kind of a long list of questions that Elizabeth Warren and her team have posed to OpenAI and Sam Altman. Good stuff. Uh, shout out to Elizabeth Warren. I think we need this kind of proactive, frankly, slightly aggressive oversight on artificial intelligence development from the federal government. The EU currently is, is leading the charge on that right now with their recent passing of the EU AI Act. And it's interesting to see how some of our federal representatives are, are following suit here in the U.S. So on the same day that letter was published, OpenAI published their GPT-40 system card, which outlines some safety concerns and risks that they discovered in their own testing. So here's the key areas of risk that they evaluated unauthorized voice generation, speaker identification, ungrounded inference and sensitive trait attribution, generating disallowed audio content, generating erotic or violent speech. And according to their preparedness framework scorecard, all of the key areas, cybersecurity, biological threats, and model autonomy 
all got a low risk score. However, persuasion got a medium risk score. So that's the one we're going to focus on. So what do the ratings really mean and how do they impact model development? Only models with post mitigation score of medium or below can be deployed. So GPT-40 passes that threshold. It can be deployed based on their preparedness scorecard. But only models with a post mitigation risk of high or below can continue to be developed. So even if any of these were high, they would still allow themselves to continue developing. But if they scored what the, whatever the highest is, oh, I'm sorry, critical, then they would just have to kill the model, basically start over is what, is what it sounds like. It's interesting to see how they're framing this, the, the testing around persuasion. Um, it seems to be very much informed by what we saw happen in Cambridge Analytica in 2016, because they're even calling out political topics like um, abortion opinion, minimum wage opinion, immigration opinion. And they seem to be testing, you know, the effects of human articles, AI articles, and then AI chatbots. Um, as you can see down here, there's liberal and conservative, and then the margin of influence there. And then up here, um, it shows that there's a few different modalities, modalities they were testing as well. So human static audio, AI static audio, human interactive conversations, AI interactive conversations. So they're kind of testing all these different modalities and different political topics to understand how much persuasion or influence the modalities might be able to have over an individual. This is actually where the story dovetails into my own personal experience, my personal anecdote that I wanted to share. So over the past few weeks, I've been playing around a lot with custom GPTs. In particular, I've been making custom GPTs to help myself and my audience more quickly understand different political agendas or legislation that's being passed. There's two that I made. I made one for Project 2025. I made a video about it on YouTube and TikTok, and that became pretty popular. And the other one I made was on the EU AI Act. Now, what's interesting is both of those custom GPTs have been revoked from the custom GPT store by OpenAI. Here's my email explaining uh, from them that my custom GPT has been removed from the public. The first one on Project 2025, I thought it was a little bit strange. It's a public document, but it is a very opinionated public document. So... I was a little bit disappointed that they removed it, but I, I could at least understand that, uh, you know, they felt that it that it might be um, a little bit too uh, uh, influential to have a GPT analyzing that document and explaining it to people. The EU AI Act, on the other hand, that's just legislation in the EU that's passed. It's not really an opinionated document. It's just fact-based document. Here's the actual uh, legislation and how it works. Even that one was removed. So from my personal experience, anything related to politics or legislation so far is getting removed from the custom GPT store. And it seems to be tied to this, uh, uh, or I think it's probably tied to this um, medium level risk on persuasion. So um, the pattern that I'm noticing is anything regarding politics they're, they're taking off. They're probably worried about people using their, their tools to either be persuaded in one direction or the other or to persuade others in one direction or the other. Last part of the news update here on AI safety, Zico Coulter has joined OpenAI um, as one of their board members. So he specializes in AI safety. Um, you have to wonder, you know, all of this stuff happened on the same day. The open letter from Elizabeth Warren, the publishing of OpenAI's uh, safety report, and, Z and the announcement of Zico Coulter joining the board of directors. Um, very interesting stuff, clearly coordinated. But uh, I think a couple things. My takeaway is, yikes, this stuff is scary, but I'm also encouraged and comforted that it's out there in the open and they're publishing this stuff transparently and they're clearly working on it. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. I'll catch you next time. Peace.